Welcome to the Wix SEO Workshop. I'm your host, Brett, and today we're going to be talking about streamlining your workflow with Wix Advanced SEO Tools. Uh, joining us is Donna. Donna, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, I'm Donna. I'm a product manager here at the Wix SEO team. And today we'll talk about how you can use your, our SEO tools to answer your clients' SEO needs. Perfect. Everybody's excited. So before we jump into that, just a couple of quick housekeeping things. One, we are going to record this. And two, when you talk in the chat, please make sure you set it to all panelists and attendees so everybody can see what you're saying because uh, there's a lot of great stuff. I see some people are checking in from all over the world. This is a super exciting. So Donna, we've got a lot, a lot of partners here. What are we going to be talking about today? So let's just jump right to it. So today we'll cover everything in our SEO tools. We'll start with uh, learning how to customize SEO settings for all of your site pages. We'll talk about getting to know SEO patterns, uh, one of our most powerful tools. We'll learn how to verify your site with different search engines. We'll learn how to work with the redirect manager tool. Uh, we'll talk about structured data, about robots.txt, uh, and I'll also show you a sneaky peek of what we're working on right now. So, Are you sure we can do all of this in an hour? Because that's a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. You'll see. And a so, Q&A. I like the Q&A part. So if you do have questions, the team's watching right. and, and we'll be grabbing those questions and trying to answer them towards the end. Of course. Okay, so I suggest we'll just start. So let's start with talking about how to customize page level SEO settings. So before we do that, uh, I don't know how many of you know, but when every Wix website has a pre-populated SEO settings, meaning the meta tags that serves as the best default we could provide giving the, the best practices. Then that's a good starting point for you. But as you know, uh, getting results in SEO takes work, time and optimization. And these tags are a great place to start in. So many types of Wix pages have the SEO settings panel. And there you can customize all of the meta tags and their default values and even add some of your own. So uh, let's check it out. So I have my uh, test website here of a fitness trainer. And let's try to customize the SEO settings for the contact page. So I'll go to the contact page, click on the three dots here and go to SEO. And here we have three tabs that all belong to the SEO panel that I just mentioned and reflect the SEO settings of the page. So the first one reflects how this page looks like on the search engines. So we have several fields here. The first one is the URL slug. URL slug is the last part of the URL that reflects the value of that exact page. And that's basically its identifier. So let's just change it from contact me to contact. We also have, have here the SEO title, as you can see here in the Google preview and the SEO description. The second tab is for social share settings, meaning here you can control how this page looks like when it's being shared on social media. So you have the image, the title, and the description. And here is where things get a little bit more advanced. So I'll talk about structured data towards the end, I promise. But here you can also set uh, the values of more advanced meta tags that we've already, as I said, got you covered um, with our defaults. So here are these tags and you can customize their value. You can even hide them if you don't want them on your site, but I do not recommend doing that unless you are very, very sure that you do not want them on your site because these in the end of the day are the best practices. And you can also add custom meta tags. So I'll give you an example. If I want, for example, to add a very, um, a custom tag for Twitter, I want to give Twitter bots a very direct instructions on how to show this page when it's being shared on Twitter. So I can just click add new tag, paste my tag, click apply, and that's it. It's here. That's incredible. I, that's I, I, I use this a lot and I didn't even, I didn't even know about that. Yeah, yeah, that's a very nice feature. Although you do have most of the, of the, all of the important meta tags already set for you in default, but you always have the option to have full customization. So that's a very nice feature. So now let me ask you a question. I'm gonna jump in because Adam's got a great question and I, this is really relevant, Donna. Where, are we gonna talk about where I could have gotten that meta tag? So I wasn't planning on talking about that, but sure, let's, let's talk about it. So 
these this meta tags usually come with a very specific need of yours. Well, I, I assume we're talking about custom meta tags and adding. Let's say Twitter. Let's say, for example, Twitter. How would I get the Twitter meta, meta tag to go right there? Yeah, so it's definitely something that's very easy to either write on your own. There are many guides. I think uh, even in our KB, there is a guide to how to write meta tags properly. We can share the link afterwards. Awesome. There are also generators that you can check out online if you are looking for a very specific tag. But again, most of the of most of our default already got you covered. So perfect. Thank you. Me. Thank you. Okay, so let's continue, and let's talk about SEO patterns. So after we saw how to edit the SEO settings for a specific page, I bet some of you thought, but what do I do if I have dozens of pages, like product pages, for example? Uh, do I have to go one by one and customize them? And this is exactly why we came up with SEO patterns. So SEO patterns allows you to customize the SEO settings for all of your pages of a specific type at once, instead of going one by one. And in order to make sure that you can create unique and efficient patterns, you can use variables. I'll show you in a second. And variables are dynamic values that change according to the specific page. So you can create a, some kind of a template for all of our product pages, for example, and it will change according to the specific product that is currently being viewed. And it's very cool. I'll show you all in a second. But just remember before that, that when you work with SEO patterns, it affects all of the pages that you haven't already customized SEO settings for. So it's a very powerful feature that needs to be used wisely. And before we take a look at the tool, there are many page types that you can use SEO patterns for, such as stores, events, forum, blog, uh, pro gallery expand mode. Very soon we're also launching challenges and bookings, and soon we'll cover all of the page types in Wix, so we will be able to use it for everything. So let's see how it works. So I'll go to my site's dashboard, and under marketing and SEO, there is uh, our Set, um, section for SEO tools. Let's go to SEO patterns and go to our products. So some of you might see this in a bit different UI. What you're seeing here is actually the new UI that we're rolling out. So some of you might see the old version, but this is uh, where we're going. So here are all the sections of the settings that you can customize. So let's start with the search engines and social media. So you'll see the settings here are quite similar to what you saw in the panel. And that's no coincidence because it's the same settings. Here you can set it for the entire, all of your pages of that page type. And in the panel, you can override them and I'll show you and I'll show you how to do it in a second. Uh, so these are the variables that I mentioned. So for example, the default settings that Wix set for you for SEO title is that it starts with the product name, then there's a pipe and then the site name. So if, for example, I have a, a blue dress and my site is uh, fashion.com, you'll see blue dress, pipe, fashion.com for that specific product. So let's see how we can use variables to edit, for example, my SEO description. So currently it takes the product description, the same one that I wrote for the product when I defined it. So let's try to make it a bit more interesting. For example, let's add the price. So I'll add it's only, and I can click add variable add the price, add the currency, add an exclamation mark, and I'm done. And I'll show you how it looks like in a second. But you also have more types of settings here. Here are all the advanced tags that I just showed you from, uh, of, from, from the previous panel, and you can control the settings here. But again, I highly recommend to not edit them unless you're absolutely sure of what you're doing because these are very, very powerful settings that can affect how search bots view and index your website. So just a note on that. And now, if for example, I have a specific product on my site that I don't want to have these settings. So let's see how we do that. Let's, I'll go to products. I'll select a specific one click on edit SEO settings. And here you see in the description, what I just added, only 30 USD, it's just what we did together. But for this product, I don't want it. So I can simply delete it. I can make any changes that I want here. Click save, that's it. 
So you can both control it from the page type level, let's call it that way, using SEO patterns and override it using the SEO panel. So you have full freedom. So, so, so and, and what's an example of, of, of actually doing this where I may want to go in, maybe is it something like a holiday special on this particular, the Gen Sport bottle, maybe it's 30% off, I can change the SEO for that. Is that an example? It, it is an example, but you need to remember that Google needs to come and crawl your website, see this changes and update your site accordingly. And unfortunately we cannot always control how often and how does Google update your site? So we can definitely, you can definitely try, but we cannot guarantee that it will apply as soon as you want it to be. But definitely it, it's, it's, a, it's a practice that many take, especially during the November month. Thank you, thank you. Great. Okay, so moving on to verifying sites with different search engines. So I'm sure many of you are familiar, but search engines provide very powerful tools for website builders that helps the builders better understand how a site is doing in search engines. It shows the search data such as impressions, click for specific keywords, for specific phrases, uh, the trends over time. Uh, it shows errors in indexing and many more. And these are great tools that can really help with the optimization process. But in order to access them, you need to prove you're the owner of the site. And this process is site verification. And it includes taking a meta tag that you're given from the search engine, from the tool, and pasting it in the HTML head, and then asking the, the, uh, asking the search engines to come back and see that it is indeed there. It might sound a bit complex, but it really isn't, uh, because this can easily be done with our site verification tool. You just need to choose the relevant search engines, paste the meta tag that, that it gave you, and we make sure to add it in the right place. You just need to click Save and head back to the search engine and hit verify. And if you oh, have- This is interesting. I didn't even know that there was a, that we had a Pinterest engine. I didn't know we had that, but I'm, I'm just curious how many people attending are using Pinterest or have used this? I just drop it in chat. I'm, just, I'm curious because I'm learning stuff from this, Donna, and, and this, is, this is great. So, so not many consider Pinterest as a search engine, but that's a very big mistake because Pinterest is a search engine, a very, very big and very popular one. So yeah, there's a lot of people, a lot of people that don't know, a lot of people are using it, but Kira uses it for his, this is, this is great. Yeah. And I do want to remind you, I'm sure you're familiar with our SEO Wiz. So when you connect to Google through the SEO Wiz, we do the verification for you. So no need to worry about that. And if you've connected through SEO Wiz, then no need to, to connect to Google Search Console through this tool. And if you have any other issues, either you or uh, your client, there is our step-by-step -step guide, as you can see in the click here, and you can click it and you have everything elaborated there. There's a lot of amazing information that's being passed between partners right now. They're, they're talking about how some people are doing TikTok videos and putting it on Pinterest. Like this is, this is really cool. This is really cool. We could probably spend a whole session just on this, but I'll, I'll yeah. shut up now. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to talk about one of my favorite tools and it is the URL redirect manager tool. So um, what are 301 redirects? So it's a way to send both the site visitors and the search bots from one um, URL address to the other. And it's a very powerful tool because search engines are familiar with, with it and they move all of the authority and the ranking and the reputation that the old URL had and they move it to the, to the next one. And why will you need to set 301 redirects? Some very important examples. If, for example, you've deleted a URL after you already published your sites and think that both site visitors and search engines that might have already indexed that page, they now have a broken URL unless you do this 301 redirect. And this also applies even if you do the slight change in the URL um, structure, just like I did when I just changed my URL slug from contact me to contact. So just like that. Donna, what is that? What happens if you if you change a URL and you don't give a 301 uh, redirect? Like what's the scenario? What then happens? So visitors and search engines will simply hit 404. Is that, does that negatively affect your SEO ranking if you have broken URLs? Of 
course. Think that the main purpose of Google is to provide their searchers the best experience. And if they see that a page has 404, why would they show it in search results? Man, there is a great question right there. Tabitha, I have to grab that. How do you find if you have some broken URLs? Is there a way to search and crawl your site for broken URLs? Yes. So there are several ways to do that, some with external tools and some with tools that are not live to users yet, but I can do a little spoiler and tell you all about them. We will be launching very soon our very own log analytics, and you'll be able to see the list of broken URLs that you have and fix accordingly. It will take a few weeks for us to, to roll this out, but just a, a sneak peek that I wasn't even planning to share, but there you go. And That's awesome. So we got to learn that. And also we got to see the new uh, SEO management console. So that's two sneak peeks. Yes. And until then, you can either use the Google search console. Like you, there is a report where you can see all the errors that pages got, and then you'll see if they got 404. And there are external audit tools that you can use, uh, which I'm sure some of you already use, such as Screaming Frog, Deep Crawl, SEMrush, and similar to those. Thank you so much, Don, and thank you for the question, Tabitha. Great. So now let's see how this tool works. So I'll go back to SEO tools for this. I'll click on URL redirect manager. And I'll show you all the options that you have to add redirects. So the first one, after you click here, you have two main options. One of them is adding a single redirect from one URL to another, and the other is adding a group redirect, which I'll talk to you about it in a second. So let's start with the single redirect. So here you simply add the, the old slug that you used and the new one, you click save and that's it. So for example, I had a page that's contact me, and now I have contact. And I can also choose from this list that we have for you with all of the pages of that site. So it's very comfortable. Then you just click save and that's it. Group redirects is a much more powerful feature and can be very, very useful in several cases. And in, by setting group redirect, you can basically redirect several pages that share the same path. And what is a, a very cool example, as you can see here in the placeholders, if for example, you change the name of your forum category this also changes the URL. And you need to go and post by post by post by post and redirect. So instead of doing that, just go to this tool, enter the old category here, the new category here, click save, and that's it, you're set. Another interesting example is um, if, for example, you're migrating your site from a different platform. And let's just say this platform has a different URL structure for stores products let's just say it starts like this shop and then there is the product slug and in wix as you know it's product page by doing this very simple action you've got all of your redirects of your product page covered and that's it I bet there's a lot of people that didn't know that, but that's really cool. And there are a lot of questions about moving from one domain to another. And there's a few people that are talking about moving from uh, other platforms to Wix. How do you do that? I do want, uh, want to remind everybody, maybe the team can drop the link for later. Uh, we did do a, a, a SEO workshop specifically on that. So I would refresh yourself on that. I don't want to derail this one, although we probably could. Don, I'm scared to ask you anything. You're so knowledgeable. So uh, let's drop that link for the attendees, please. Thanks. And another hey, important, hey, important ahead, note, while, why you, you reminded me uh, when you asked this, is that this tool only applies for specific URLs, meaning that if you want to change your site's domain or to redirect traffic from one domain to another, it's not through this tool. You need to go to domains and plug in your new domain or your new secondary domain. This is only for specific URLs. And it's important to note. So thank you, Brett. And now I'll show you another cool feature, which is using the import redirects feature. So let's just say you've made significant changes to your site and you've deleted a lot of pages and you've renamed a lot of pages and there are many redirects for you to set. So I don't want you to go one by one and add them. I know it can be a bit exhausting, mainly when you're using, uh, when you're building sites in large scale. So this is why we have the import feature. So you click 
import. Then you can upload the CSV file with your redirect. So I've prepared the file for us just to check out. You upload your file and then we check it for you and you get a report and you see here that I have two new redirects which seem okay and two invalid ones means I, I, I did something wrong. So in order to fix them, I can download the CSV report to see the status of each redirect and then I'll be able to easily fix them. So let's just do this together. By the way, this is a popular tool. I just, there's a lot of people that just said they love this tool. So, so a lot of people are using this, yeah. Yeah, and if you have any feedback on this tool or any requests, please share them. So let's here, let's see, take a look at the examples. So the first one, info and information is invalid. Remove any spaces from the URLs in this redirect. That's right, I have a space here. Done. And here, the old URL and the new URL are the same. Makes sense. You cannot redirect from one URL to itself. So I'll just change it. And then I click. I save. And here, I can simply click Replace. Take this new file that I just fixed. And that's it. Four valid redirects fixed. I click Import. And there they are. Don't you worry, Trish, we have you covered. This is being recorded. Okay. That's fantastic, so, Donna. That's great. That's great. People are loving this. I'm so happy to hear. And if you have any questions, please share them so we can answer in, in the end of the session. We have a lot. We have so a lot. So let's talk about. Great. So let's talk about working with structured data. So structured data is a great way to tell search engines more about the content uh, of a page. So think of it as some kind of a dictionary with values that the search engines are familiar with. And it's basically technically wise, it's a script tag that we add to a page. And according to the specific type of the value in the dictionary, it includes more details, as we said, that helps search engines understand the content of the page. And one of the main benefits um, in using this tool and adding the details to the search engines is that they can eventually present it and show it as rich results in the search results page. As you can see in the examples for the recipe here. So it's, it's a screenshot from search results, but you see that it's not a standard result. We have the calories, the cook time, the rating, a, a, a video of the recipe, and it's all done with structured data. So that's very cool. Um, and before we dive into and how to add it, just so you know that we automatically add structured data to pages for you, such as product pages, events, forum. You can also uh, turn the feature on for blog. So we've got you covered where we can. But if you want to add extra structured data, extra schemas to your on site pages, you can definitely do that. Uh, so let's take a look at an example. So let's go back to the editor. And here, um, for example, I, uh, uh, Jen Olson, my client, let's say, she is uh, hiring. She's trying to, to hire a new assistant because things are getting busier and it's great. And we can add actually structured data for a job posting that if someone searches for something similar, it will pop on in search results as a rich result. So as I started saying, structured data is uh, a code. So let's see where you add it. You click on the SEO settings. And as I promised, we're getting back to the advanced SEO tab. This is where you paste your code. And I bet you're asking yourself, how do I get this code? So that's what I was about to ask. I know, Brett, I, I know you by now. <laughs> so uh, so let's go to see how, how we get it. So there are many external tools that you can use. And here, for example, I used this schema generator. I selected job posting and I pre-filled all of the details for us. And here is just the code waiting for me. So I'm just gonna take it. So just to be clear, this is a, a separate entity, a separate site, and you're getting structured data for your Wix site. And this is how you're doing it. Yes. Okay. For now, spoiler alert, soon you will be able to do something very similar through our platform. I'll tell you all about it in, in the sneak peek section. Oh but man. For now, for now Let's take this, go back to the editor, paste it here. 
save, publish, and you're done. But a reminder, in order for it to show on search results, the search bot needs to come and see these changes and crawl your website and to decide whether it's um, eligible to, to be shown as, as a reach result. What you can do, and I'll go back to the tool for, for a second, is to test for search results, for reach results, sorry. So this tool provides a very cool feature. You can click test, reach results test. Let's set the code together and see if it's eligible for reach results. Yay. And you can even see a preview of the results and how it would look like. So this is the reach results for job posting. And that's just one example of the things you can do with structured data. You have the uh, Google search gallery that I really encourage you guys to go in and, and take a look at all of the types that they support reach results for. Um, many of them, as I said, are supported out of the box um, by Wix, but there are many others. So you're more than welcome to check it out. And just to be clear, what are we looking at on that screen? What, where was that and where did you do this test? So this is the external tool that I use to generate my code. And this tool has a cool benefit and it links to the rich results testing tool that Google has. But you can access this tool regardless like it's available for everyone. You just paste either the URL that you're trying to test or the actual code, and it runs a test for you and tells you if it's eligible for reach results or not, if there are any warnings or missing fields or anything that you need to take care of in order to appear as a reach result. Perfect, thank you. So, Those are a couple of questions that were asked that the uh, other partners are answering, so uh, I wanna ask them. But So thanks guys for helping, for supporting yourselves here. This is awesome. Sorry, Donna, go ahead. Okay, great. So uh, the last thing that we'll talk about is editing the site's robots.txt file. So what is a robots.txt file? So it's basically a file that includes instructions for search engines on how to call a website. And it's an extremely, extremely powerful feature. So I really encourage you to not edit your robots.txt file unless you know what you're doing. And if you're wondering when will I even need to edit my robots.txt file. It's if you see that, for example, some pages of your site are being crawled more often than others, and you want to direct bots to crawl other pages when they come crawling your website, because as you know, each site is has some kind of a crawl budget. So when a bot comes to crawl your website, it won't probably crawl all of the pages every time it comes and visit the websites. So by using the robots.txt, you can better refer the bots to where you want them. But be very cautious with it because it basically affects how bots call your website, as I said. So um, it's a very powerful feature. But an, a note on that, it's not a tool to add, it's not a tool, sorry, to hide pages from search engines in terms of no index. If you, if you don't want your pages to be indexed, then you need to add the no index tag, which you can find in our SEO panel. And also in SEO patterns, as you saw, and you can turn the no index off or on for all the page types at once. Um, you just answered Angelica's question. So awesome. Great. Angelica, that was, that was the answer. She asked, how can we block certain pages? Exactly what you just said. And I can show it if you want. Sure. Want you to, sure. sure. Let, let's, let's, let's look at it. Of course. Okay. So Angelica okay. says you're on it and she loves it. So let's look at all three ways you have to hide your site from search results. There are three ways on three different levels. So the first one is through SEO tools, general settings, show your site in search results. This is like the main plug for your site. If you turn this off, then your entire site is, won't be indexed by, uh, by search engines. So that's one way to do it. If you want, for example, of course, your entire site blocked. If you just want to hide your product pages, then you can go to SEO patterns, go to products, go to search engine and social media, and turn this toggle off. And if you want to do it for a specific page, then I'll I'll show it in the editor, but it's the yeah, same you, for product. Yes, I, I was about to say for, for, for pages, you can do it right in the editor too. Yeah, so you go to the SEO panel, you go to the, to the SEO tab, the first one for search, you scroll all the way down and here is the toggle. 
So just make sure you use this feature carefully. So that's that's that those are the three ways that you can disable a page or a store or, or whatever to not be picked up or indexed by Google. Yes, but there are different ways because they affect each other. If you exactly. do the first one, it affects your entire site. If you do the second one, it affects all of your product pages. And the third one is just for a specific page. Perfect. That's amazing answer. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Great, Great. question, y'all. So uh, how to edit your robots.txt file? Again, it's in SEO tools, robots.txt file editor. You click on view file and there you can edit it. And the default file that we give you basically allows all user agents, as you see here, to call everything on your site. We don't block them from doing anything. So that's the default settings that you have. I have to throw in one more question. This is a, this is a good one and it's sort of close to what we're talking about. Are permissioned pages crawled? No. Thank you. I mean, crawled, yes. Indexed, no. I, I assume that was the question. Yes, they were asking if it was if it was crawled, but if you want to elaborate the difference between being crawled and indexed and what that means, that'd be great. Yeah, so crawl crawling basically is the action of the bot coming to the page and scanning it. And it can result in either indexing it in the Google library where they extract pages to show in the search results eventually or to not index it. And if they see uh, password protected pages, permissions pages, uh, private pages, or no index pages, then they don't index it. So, but it, but it could be possible to have a member page that is crawled um, and indexed, but you can't interact with it without becoming a member. Is that possible? Can you repeat the question? I lost the, the, the... The question would be if you have a, if you have a, a membership only page where yeah. to be a member, you can, you, to interact or, well, maybe, maybe I want to dial that back because a lot of people who have membership pages, they only want, they want to pay well for people to see it. So I see what you're saying. I think you answered this question. Yeah. So basically if the page is only visible for specific entities, then it won't be indexed and, and available for all. And I think it's important to note that uh, password protected areas are not indexed and you cleared that up. So that was, I think, part of the question. So thanks, Donna. Good, good question. Great. Okay, so Fred, I told you we can cover it in, in less than an hour. And we did. Woo! I feel like we could keep going. There's so many great questions I haven't even gotten to yet. Yeah, I, I, I can keep going. Um, but let's just recap everything we talked about. So we started with talking about how, how to customize SEO settings for specific pages. And then we leveled it up and talked about how to customize groups of pages of the same type using SEO patterns. We briefly talked about how to verify your site with search engines. We talked about the URL redirect manager tool. We talked about the single redirect, the group redirects. The, the import uh, feature, which uh, you all loved, and I'm very happy to hear that. And then we talked about structured data and robots TXT. And I want to share just a sneak peek of what we're doing next and what we're working on. And these will be released in the next few weeks or month. It depends on the feature. Um, but the first thing that we will release is URL structure customization for your page types, which I know is something that you've been waiting for. What you see in the example here is how it will look like. So you see it will be a part of SEO patterns and there will be a new section added for the page URL. And here you see the example for product because this will be the first one that we will launch. And you'll be able to add it the product page prefix. You'll be able to add it, to remove it, to do anything you want, you'll have full freedom with, um, with, the, with the URL structure. Um, so that's the first thing that we'll add. The second one is, as I already spoiled before and told you, we'll do some structured data improvements. Uh, whether, it's in, whether if it's in the default that we support, you'll get more defaults for more page types. Uh, so you won't have to work uh, that hard to add structured data. And we'll make adding structured data much easier for you. Um, using uh, presets, um, and I can't wait to show it to you in a few few weeks. We'll share it uh, in the partners group. We'll definitely have to have another. Uh, I think I think everybody has unanimously agreed, Donna, that you are amazing. So maybe you we'll, we'll can have another workshop on that in the future. I'd be happy to. 
And the last uh, feature that we'll be adding, not the last one, but the last of this specific list, is uh, custom tags in SEO patterns. So you remember in the beginning of the session that we added a custom tag, a Twitter custom tag, uh, to one of my pages in the editor. So if you want to do that for your all of your editor pages at once, then soon you'll be able to do it. So that's something that we are working on now. So that's it for me. And I'm ready for some uh, for some questions. Oh, I, I, I have a lot. I'm going to try to jump back to what everyone asked earlier. So these may be a little all over the place, Donna. So um, we have some some great answers here or, or some great questions. And I know you've got some good answers. So let me just try to pick a couple here. Here's a really good one that Angelica asked earlier. And it is, is the site map automatically generated for Google and submitted? Um, and can you tell us about that? And I think here's a, also a great opportunity to sort of talk about what the SEO wizard does and, and how it's related here. Exactly. So it's basically two questions and I'll answer them separately. So the first one is about the sitemap being generated automatically. The answer is yes. And it's also being updated automatically with every publish, with every change that you do on your site basically once it's published. So you're covered in terms of sitemaps. And it's not automatically submitted because it is a very powerful action that we want you to have the ability to, to opt in it to do. And the best way to do it through our platform is connecting to Google through the SEO Wiz. So when you connect to Google through the SEO Wiz, three things happen. The first one is we create a property for you on Google Search Console and we verify the site, just like we spoke about like a few slides ago. The second is we submit your sitemap. And the third one, which is a very, very cool one, is we submit your homepage for speedy indexing and it's being indexed in under a minute. So this is a very good way to submit your sitemap for the first time, but if you need to resubmit it, you will have to go to Google Search Console and do it through there. That's a really powerful feature that I, uh, that I don't think everybody really understands. And it's, it's, it's specifically the third thing that the, that the SEO Wiz does where it submits to Google and, and Google indexes it. That is, and then that kind of dovetails into another question that someone asked is, how long does it take for the robots crawling around the internet to finally get to my site so I'm indexed? Yeah, that is an, that's an amazing question. And I'm sure it's something that bothers and like it's on everyone's mind. And it really depends. It can take uh, a day, it can take three, it can take weeks. It really depends on your sites already gained authority because as you know, Google tends to come back to sites that he already knows that are uh, an authority of a specific field, so he wants to keep he wants to keep being updated. Um, but you can try to speed up the process by submitting your sitemap and like getting into Google's line. But I do uh, ask you and warn you to not abuse this feature and not like through the search console submit your sitemaps all over and over again because it it won't help you. So submit it. The bot will come after three days a week. That's usually what I'm familiar with. Uh, and then if you need to do it again, then do it again, but don't like do it like a day after a day after a day after a day. It, it won't help you. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks. I was reading some of the questions that were submitted earlier. We've got some really great ones. There are, there are a lot of questions and I want to make sure that for those who, who may be joining late, can you quickly tell us um, Again, can you give us a, a quick example of how to find that, how to find broken URLs? And I know you gave us a sneak peek, but I want to give you an opportunity to answer that again for us because there's a lot of those. Yeah, okay. So for broken URLs, I, I won't talk about the sneak peek now because I bet you want to know how to do it now. Uh, we will release the tools later on and then you'll be able to use our tools. But until then, you can use Search Console. There are reports that shows broken URLs that bots already found. And you can use... Um, audit tools uh, such as Screaming Frog, Deep Crawl. There are many, many other tools. These are just two examples. And as I started saying, soon you'll be able to find it out through our platform. We're working on it. Awesome. The best, the best tip that I can give you to prevent broken URLs from happening is that every time you do a, a, the slightest of changes, just go in and do a URL redirect immediately after that. that that's the best thing you can do. Perfect. Thank you very much. By the way, Omar, I see that. I'll get to that. Let me let me get to a, a couple other ones. Um, 
And I'm going to choose this one. Bakir, you were awesome. Thanks for answering all the questions for the partner. So I'm, I'm grabbing you out of the bunch. Question on advanced SEO, Donna. Uh, mm -hmm. What is breadcrumb and, and does it help? Okay, so I think it's best if I show you what breadcrumbs are. I love show and tell with Donna and we are excited about this. Okay, so breadcrumbs um i'm trying to think where i have a good example for breadcrumbs let's just so okay i searched before and okay never mind i tried showing you a, a cool search result it didn't work out but breadcrumbs are are basically a, a path I'll, maybe I'll try to find it in the images so it will be, I think, clearer. So, yeah. These are breadcrumbs. It shows the path that you had to go through to get to the specific URL that you're now viewing. And it's very common to add breadcrumbs to both your uh, web pages and to also uh, show it in uh, search results using snapshot data. So, I'm happy to tell you that we are working on breadcrumbs component uh, now that will include structural data in it. So very soon you'll have it. And breadcrumbs are very important for SEO because it helps both the search engines and the visitors to understand the hierarchy. I think that's the fifth new feature you've revealed, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, Donna. Yeah, we, we, we've been working hard. And You're uh, spilling all the tea and I love it. So um, thank you for the question and, and thank you for that answer, Donna. Are, did, uh, did I cut you off? Is that it? No, no, that is. Okay, okay. A uh, couple other great ones. Um, can you talk a little bit about, let's go back to this. What's the difference between hiding a page and not indexing the page? So it's, there is not no difference. Basically, it's just a terminology that we use here. Uh, to make things more clear. But if you turn the hide from search engines, like show this page in search engines, if you like turn the toggle off, it means you hide them. And it basically means that you turn the no index tag on, like change the robot stack to be no index. That, Understood. So, so hiding a page or an element or, or whatever is basically a no index. It's the same. Yeah. It's just understood. Great question. So Great everything answer. that you see here are basically meta tags with like our UI representation to make things easier for you. But this is a meta tag that says robots, meta robots index. And if I turn it off, it's no index. Now that's a great follow-up question. Um, and Adam asks, when you hide a page, does that remove it from the navigation menu? No. That's correct. It does not. So interesting. Uh, oh, I love this. Oh, I could do this all day, Donna. You're just full of information. Okay, let's jump to another one. Omar had a great question. Is it possible to uh, have uh, SEO settings for specific products in single product dynamic pages? You have, for dynamic pages, I don't have it on this website, but you do have SEO settings for dynamic pages, but you cannot do it for a specific page just yet. No, but it's a great feature request. And uh, if we can take a note on this and then- uh, Perfect, perfect. Um, by the way, if you, it, Omar, if you want to, I'm sure there's a way, I'll put it in chat. There you go. You can, if you email me, I'm not gonna say it because who knows when this goes up, I don't want people getting my email, but I trust the folks here. Okay, so let's jump to another one. Um, can you add the JSON structured data code to individual blog posts? Um, not yet, but soon. It's part of the improvements that we're working on. So for blog posts, what you have today is that we add an article schema for you. And in the very near future, we'll be able to either choose to not use the schema, but use another one or add your own custom. But currently uh, you cannot, but very soon. Okay, I have time for a few more. I'm just combing through some of these. There are some, some really, really good ones. Here's a, here's a really great one. Lee asked earlier, how can you optimize multiple locations for local search? And are there special tools for mapping multiple, uh, multiple locations? So 
optimizing SEO for local businesses in and in particular for multiple locations um, it's a it's it's a whole new world let's let's put it that way and there are many many strategies that you uh, you can take there are no Wix SEO tools to support this just yet uh, but I highly encourage you to either read our SEO guide there are many information regarding um, optimizing for local SEO there um, yeah, I, I can I can start going into it, Bert, but it will take two hours to explain local SEO. Actually, strategy. let's plan that. Let's 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 talk about that. If the if if the partners want to have that workshop, I'm sure we could strong arm you into doing another one. Yeah. What do y'all think, partners? Would y'all like to say that? Drop it in your comment if you're interested in that. So I'm gonna jump to another question then, um, and the <laughs> chat just blew up. The chat just blew up. So uh, so. <laughs> Question about, about the Wix Wiz. Can you overwrite the recommendations of the Wiz? I'm not sure what, what is the intention with overwriting. So sometimes the Wiz wants you to use specific titles and maybe if you want to do your own, can you change it before completing the task? Yeah. So SEO Wiz shows you, um, it shows recommendations for titles, but in the end of the day, you can choose the option of write your own using the guidelines and the recommendations. You can write wherever you want and just make sure it fits the general guidelines, meaning like it includes your business name, it includes your keyword, it's in a, of a specific length that meets the guidelines of search engines. Um, but yes, you can write your own. You don't need to choose um, anything from the presets, definitely. Perfect, okay, that was a, there's just some, Really great questions. And, and by the way, the entire chat just exploded, Donna. So yes, they want to know all about uh, international SEO, localized SEO. So I, I think we have a, a winner there. So let's do, let me grab maybe one or two more. I know you've, you've got to get back to building all these amazing things you've just revealed. So let's see. Here's a really great question. And maybe here's a tip for the partners. And Wix Trainer asks, what is a great way to present the SEO progress that you're making on a client site to the client? That's an amazing question. Isn't it? It's, a, it's an amazing question. And I think that currently um, with the Wix SEO tools, you can use the SEO Wiz and show the progress that you've made from the when you started the website and to the end of it. But I can tell you that it's something that we're thinking about a lot when we're planning our 2021 and we really want to be able to give you the answer to provide a progress indication or reporting for your customers. So it's definitely something that we're thinking about. I'm sure you can imagine that we're now planning our 2021. So I'd be happy to share a final update once we, we know what we're going to, to develop and to do, but this is definitely on our minds. So thank you for asking that. So I, I thank you for the answer. Um, so I, that's that's a great question. Let me let me see. There's another question. I want to make sure. I'm, I'm looking at a lot, guys. So I'm I'm not totally brain dead. I promise. I'm just looking at your questions. So again, there was a specific question. I lost it. That's okay. Oh no, no. Ren asks this. I'm kind of piggybacking on what you said earlier about breadcrumbs. Is it possible to do multi-level breadcrumbs? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Awesome. But, but I but I do have to say that um, the breadcrumbs needs to reflect the actual structure of your site. So if your site doesn't have multiple hierarchy, then don't do multiple breadcrumbs. Like it needs to, to reflect the actual experience that the visitor is experiencing when visiting your site. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. One more question. I'm going to take one more from David. Is it still best practice to add a location in the meta table? Uh, not that I know of. No. Okay. Um, this is great. This is great. So, man, there's so many questions we went through here, Donna. There, there's. Is there anything else that you want to wrap up that uh, that you want to say about this? And, and remember, we talked about new features. We've answered a lot of, and there's some questions that if, if once this is done, if you go back and watch it, most of these questions um, I think will be answered. Yeah, so I, I just have a small request uh, from you guys. And we really want to, to answer your needs and your feature requests. And we want to develop features that are right 
for, for you and for your needs. So please share your feature requests, please share your ideas. Um, I'll, you can find me, um, you can either find me on LinkedIn or uh, DM me, I'm on the Partners Facebook group. So feel free to do that. I'd be happy to, to speak with you and to learn from, uh, uh, from your ideas. We're taking everything into account. I can guarantee that. I have, thank you so much for that. I'm gonna snag just a couple more, one more specifically. Uh, Lisa, forgive me, I, I didn't see this, and, and but I'm gonna go ahead and grab it for you. When they, this is a question specifically about um, the, Google, the Google account. When they connect a client's account to, the, to Google through Wix, um, do they need to log into Google as the client that connected or can they use their own Google account? I recommend doing it from the client's account and then giving you specific permissions from the Google Search Console to your email. That's what I recommend. You can do it from your account, but then you'll need to give the client permissions. If you end up handing off the site back to the client, then he should be the one holding the main permissions to, to the property in Google Search Console. But that's really up to you. You can do both. That's it. So that that makes that was a great question. Sorry, I, I, I didn't catch that, Lisa. So uh, that's the answer. Okay, so this was awesome. So if you have any questions, let's keep the conversation going. Uh, this is a fantastic conversation. So I'll see you over in the partner community. And Donna, thank you so much for coming. This has been incredible. And I think we have another session already cooking up. You you are a fan favorite. You have you are the fan favorite. We're so happy to be here. Thank so, you. So thank you for being here. Partners, thanks for coming. I hope you found this uh, as, as meaningful as we did. This was fantastic. So thanks again, everybody. Be safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Bye, y'all.